Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 43. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book. We are still in chapter 6, still talking about pivot tables. We have five special pivot tables. We're going to see how to change the functions and calculations. We'll see a frequency table for qualitative data, one for quantitative. We'll see percentage of total pivot table, running totals, and even showing three calculations in one table. Our workbook is our Excel is Fun Start. You can download this by clicking on the link below the video or get it from the DVD. We're going to start on the sheet PT Data 6. Here's our data set. And we want to create a frequency table. Now frequency tables are just for counting. We're going to create two of them here. One for qualitative data, which means, hey, we just want to count how many quads we sold. And then we'll do a second one for quantitative data, where we actually have to group inside the pivot table. So we'll say something like, hey, count all the sales between 0 and 250 bucks. All right, I'm going to click in one cell on the data set. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt-NVT. We've seen that so many times before. Immediately, the Create Pivot Table dialog box shows up, and I hit Enter. All right, our first frequency table, qualitative data. I'm just going to count how many products we sold. So I'm going to drag the product to the row. And guess what? I'm going to drag the product also. Now when you're counting, it kind of doesn't matter which um, field you drop. But I'm just going to drop this here. And instantly, we get a count. Now let's change this row labels. I want the field name there. So I'm going up to uh, Design, Layout, and Tabular. We've done this a few times already just like that. All right, I'm going to select uh, some sort of style here, Whoop, just like that. I'm going to click here, and I could uh, right click, go to Value Field Settings, but I'm just going to type a new field name here, Frequency. That is a qualitative frequency table. You know, we do these kind of tables all the time, and we don't use the fancy word frequency table. It just means to count. How many bounds we sold? 24. How many quads do we sell? 24. The next um, pivot table we're going to create is also a frequency table, but it's not the categories are not going to be so neat and easy. I'm going to come down here and double click and call this PT in parentheses 6. I'm going to go back over to this sheet right here, and I'm going to click in one cell, Alt NVT. Now I'm going to put this on that existing sheet right there. I'm going to click right here and then come down to PT6. And I'm going to select, notice the sheet reference. I'm going to click in, say, G3. Click OK. All right, now we, uh, again, we're going to do sales. So I'm going to drag sales to the row labels. I thought we dragged numbers to the values. Well, we already saw this once when we grouped dates. Remember, dates are really serial numbers. You can do the same thing with sales. Now I'm going to right click group. And how convenient is that? They tell me the min and the max. I'm actually going to make sure my categories are all the same. So I'm going to start at 0, tab, tab. And I'm going to go to 17. I just want to put equal, have a start number and an end number that match the increment between each category. And I'm going to say 250 just like that. We saw earlier how to do use the frequency function, and we even saw how to uh, use count if and sum if to uh, add uh, between, do this between criteria. Um, but here with the pivot table, this is so easy. I'm just going to click OK. And just like that, instantly creates. All we do is drag the sales down to the values, and you're done. It counts. Now we'll do a little formatting. I'm going to go design tabular. So I get that sales. I'm going to type frequency. I can't, couldn't possibly have spelled that right. F7. Luckily, it knows how to spell frequency. And just like that, we have oh, well, maybe a little bit of formatting, too. We have our frequency table. Now, I do want to show you, I want to compare this between criteria to what we did with count ifs and frequency. I'm going to go over to another workbook I already have, and I'm going to copy this little thing I made. Copy, bring it back over here, and I'm going to maybe paste it right, right here. Control V. 
Now let's look up at these categories that were automatically created, 0 to 250, 250 to 500. A little bit ambiguous. Which, where's the 250? Is it, it counted here or here? We know that you know the programmers didn't <laughs> allow 250 to be counted in both categories. Uh, so that's why I have this table down here. For a pivot table, it's going to be just like we did when we did count if. We did not include the upper bin. Now notice this is between criteria. This category is saying everything between 0 and 250. Lower number has the equal sign all the way down. When we did count if, that's the way we did it. Not only that, but also when we talked about the if function and the v lookup for categories, the equal sign was on the lower end, but not the upper end. The only exception for us when we did between criteria is with the frequency function. Frequency function had the equal sign up here. So just important, if you're learning Excel to understand the difference between count if, that's this. If v lookup, that's this. Pivot table categories, that's this. Frequency is the only time we have equal size on the on the upper end, the upper limit to the category. So these labels here, you actually can just click here and type and type out a label similar to this if you'd like. Most people have no problem with this. All right, uh, actually, I did this slightly different than in the book. In the book, I put this on a pivot table six sheet, and I put this on pivot table seven, but no problem. I did them both on the same sheet. We got to see how to put two t pivot tables on a single sheet. Now, I, we're going to go over and calculate a percentage of total report. I'm going to click on PT7. All right, percentage of total. We're going to have sum of sales for sales rep, and then we're going to figure out what percentage each sales rep had for the total. So I'm going to click in one cell in the data set, Alt-NVT, and then Enter. Immediately, I'm going to say sales rep to the row, and sum, uh, I'm sorry, sales to the values area. Well, so right now, we have a little pivot table. Let's clean this up. I'm going to immediately go up to Design, pick some style. I'm going to go up to Design, select Tabular. Well, we got that. I'm going to right click the Sales area, Value Field Settings. I'm going to go to Number. I'm going to select Currency or something like that. Click OK. Click OK. So we have that. Now watch this. Here's just the total, but I want to know Frank's, what's the percent of this column total? It's a column with the total. So I'm going to come over and drag the sales number a second time to the values area. And just like that, sum of sales too. Now I'm going to immediately come here and right click value field settings. Boop. And so far, we've seen change the name, number format, functions. But what about this? Totally amazing features here. Show value as. I'm going to just look down here, click this. And there's a bunch of really cool ones. Percentage of column total, that's what we're going to use. Percentage of row total. Uh, percentage of parent total, that's actually new in 2000 and. Uh, 10. Running total, which will do a bunch of really awesome uh, options here. So I'm going to say percent of column total. And just like that, I'm going to click OK. And it even adds a percentage format. So there we go. Notice 100% because all these add up to 1. These are all percentages. I'm going to click right here and type. We Notice we could have done this in the uh, dialog box, but we didn't. All right, performance. So there is a percentage of total. Now I'm going to come down here and call this PT8. Um, all right, now, now we're going to do still another report. This one's going to be running totals, which means we're going to show. Uh, so we have some days here. And notice we have a couple days, so we want to add the sales for this day. And then a bunch of sales on the second. So we add, a, add those. So we're going to have our pivot table do that for us um, easily. But then we're also going to have a running total. So let's see how to do this. Click in a single cell, Alt-NVT, and Enter. 
All right, the first thing is I'm going to drag my date field to the row labels. Now, earlier in our grouping video, we saw that this is cool even by itself without grouping. In fact, think about this. What did it do? It looked through that whole data set and gives me just a single occurrence of each date, which in essence, this is a unique list of dates. So now when we drag our sales to the values area, we have a daily sales report. Now I'm immediately going to do some formatting, design, something like this. I'm going to go up to layout, uh, tabular. I, do, I like to, don't like that row labels. There it is, date sum of sales. I'm going to add some number formatting, right click, value field setting, number, something like currency. Click OK, click OK. All right, so right now we just have a nice daily Tuk, 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 tuk. Those are the daily sales. But now, let's come over and our sales, we're going to do our same trick we did the last report. We're going to drag the sales down a second time to values. I'm immediately going to come over here and the running total is going to be based off the date column. So it'll have the sales for 1111 and then this one will have all of the sales for 1111 and 112. So I'm going to right click, value field settings. At the top right here, I'm going to type running total number format. I'm going to add some formatting like currency. And then again, we're going to go back to show values as. I'm going to click this drop down and say running running total in. There's a percent running total in too. Totally awesome. Use that in my stats class. All right, I'm going to say uh, running total in. The base field, that's just what do you want to base this off of. I'm going to say date, click OK. And just like that, oh, we forgot to do number formatting. Right click, value field settings, number, something like currency. And just like that, is that absolutely beautiful? A report that shows us the running total, the individual sales, and the for daily. All right, uh, let's see, we have one more pivot table, and we're going to go to the sheet. Oh, oh, I can see a big problem here. I'm going to double click this and call this PT9, and then Enter. All right, now we want to go over to the sheet Data 9. And in this example, we want to do a little statistics. Now, we talked about average functions, max, min, and functions like that. We also saw in our array formula series that we could do averaging min max with criteria. Now the average function had there's a built-in average if, but for min and max we had to get pretty tricky. But with the pivot table, you don't have to do any of that tricky stuff. We're just going to create all, a pivot table and do all three calculations inside the pivot table with one cell selected. I'm going to alt nvt and enter. All right, I would like to show sales rep. So I'm going to say sales rep down to row label. And then I'm going to add uh, my sales field one, one, two, three times. Now I'm going to come to this column, right click, value field settings. I'm going to say average number, currency, click OK, click OK. I'm going to come here, right click value field setting, max, number, currency, click OK, click OK. Right click, value field settings, min, number formatting, currency, click OK. And just like that, we've calculated, whoops, I don't want that. I'm going to say, um, Let's change the, go up to design and change this to tabular. We have the word sales rep there. Um, so I'm going to leave it average of sales and maybe, so OK, I'll double click. And then I'm going to delete that too, click OK. I was trying to put it in edit mode. Instead of double clicking, I'm going to hit F2 and then backspace, enter. 
All right, so that's adding uh, an average, a min, and a max. That's a bunch about uh, pivot tables. We had a few videos. Better come down here and call this, um, I guess it's going to be PT10. One last reminder. We saw this one time already. I'm going to go back to my PT data 9, and I'm going to change this to just a huge number just to show you. We have our data that has changed. We go back to our pivot table. Pivot tables are totally amazing, but what happened here? I don't see that up that the pivot table updating. So you got to right click, refresh. And there it is. Whoa. Galt had some gigantic sale here. <laughs> Max 500,000. All right, uh, in our next video, we'll start talking about the amazing filter feature. All right, see you next video.